Hi everyone, just trying to work out how I can see who's actually logged on here, but if, um, if you're around, join us in the group chat. You should see a little uh, chat button on the left hand side of your screen. Um, we'll kick off in a few minutes once uh, we've given people time to join in. But uh, yeah, head over to the group chat, introduce yourself. Um, one thing I'd be keen to work out is whether you're using Blogspot, uh, Tumblr, WordPress, you know, what are you blogging on? Are you new to blogging? Just introduce yourself and uh, we'll get things moving along before everyone logs in and we, um, we start talking about improving your blog design. All right, I've seen a few other people have joined in here. Uh, we're up to eight, so we're still waiting on a few more. I um, know for a fact there's a few more coming. Some of our um, blog design clients. So for those who are here anyway, my name is Mike. I am the founder of The Blog Designers. So we're basically a specialist blog design agency. That's all we do. Um, and we design blogs for uh, mummy bloggers, for... Um, for, for fashion bloggers, for professional bloggers, you know, lawyers, all sorts of things. Um, you pretty much name an industry by now. We've done a blog for it. I uh, work with giants such as the Yellow Pages to people that are brand new to blogging, barely know a thing about, you know, the web technology, all this kind of thing. So um, we've got a pretty handy little business these days. We have a lot of fun working with bloggers. Um, one thing we found that the bloggers as a you know, as a collective, um, they're a pretty experimental bunch. Like, you know, with the blog design, everyone wants to change their blog design after a, a few months, and it might just be a little tweak here or there. But I guess in this broadcast, uh, I'd like to, I guess, give you a really good overview of some of the tools you can use to improve your own blog design without having to know code. Because, you know, knowing code, prohibitive to some, we just don't think that way. Um, for others, just you know, the time. Where do you get the time to start learning it all? So um, there's a lot of good tools, thankfully, that let us do a lot of things with our blog design. And it might be um, specify fonts. It might be um, create your own color color scheme. You can even design really nice graphics these days without you know needing Photoshop or knowing how to use Photoshop. What I'd like people to do, um, as we still wait for a few more is to head over to the chat. You should see a little chat icon on the left, sort of, um, there should be this little blue chat icon. And just introduce yourself. Let me know if you're a WordPress blogger. What I'm going to be speaking about um, is really applicable to any blogger, but if I'm talking about a plugin, it's going to be about WordPress. I mean, WordPress is by far the most popular blogging platform. It's the easiest to work with and design on. So. Um, let me know if you're on WordPress or Blogger or whatever you're using. Um, there's also a little, it should be a little Q&A uh, icon there somewhere on the left, which will let you ask a question as I'm going along. So I'm going to speak uh, really about um, really four or five different topics. So the first one being um, using custom fonts in your blog design. The second one being creating your own color scheme. And then we've got creating your blog's personality, and that's a that's a big one, um, and that probably forms the basis of my experience as a blog designer. You know, I mean, it's e it's relatively easy to design. It's not that easy to design, you know, to bring out a personality or create something that's iconic and mem memorable for the people that know you. Um, I'm also going to be speaking on improving your sidebar design. 
So, you know, we've all got, most of us have the sort of standard sidebar with categories, we might have archive, meta tag, all that kind of thing. Um, so I'll be sort of giving you my opinions on what what is necessary in a sidebar, how to make it actually look good and just not sort of taking up space. Uh, we'll then also get into post sliders and I'll let you know some handy tools and things that make it easier to um, to blog, easier to get started blogging. Um, and we'll go from there, but I'll just head over to chat. If anyone um, has anything... Uh, yep, sorry, I've just heard from Micah, one of our um, audience members here, to say that we can't find group chat. So I'm not sure what's happening there. But what we might do... Um, I'm going to hopefully assume, um, and it's hard to gauge it being that I don't have an audience right in front of me here um, from my study, but I'm going to assume that we've all got Twitter. Jump on Twitter. I am at the blog designer on Twitter. So as I'm going along, if you have, if you have any questions whatsoever, just uh, send something through. And uh, to again, that is at the blog designer. I'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on the feed. Um, but also, I'll try, you know take a minute or two at the end of each um, area that I'm talking about to just give you a chance to catch up, write any notes, uh, send through any um, any questions that you've got, and I'll definitely I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, we might also, if you'd like to create a sort of hashtag, if um, if anyone's out there that wants to do that to follow what other people are asking, just put uh, hashtag uh, blog workshop at the end of your tweet. Um, but I, I'm going to get started now. The first thing I'm going to talk about is using custom fonts in your blog. Um, most of us really enjoy playing around with fonts in Microsoft Word. You might have um, built a little collection of fonts over the years and it might be through the, the programs that you use in your computer. might have automatically downloaded some. Um, I know the Apple computers, I haven't used the PC in a fair while, so I'm not, I'm not sure what the fonts are like on PCs, but I know with Apple computers these days, there's a number of really elegant fonts and there's a good variety of fonts. Web fonts, though, are a little bit different. Not every font um, works on the web. So you'll, you'll notice some websites um, on one computer might look really good, might look really elegant with some nice fonts. You might go to another computer and sometimes it can look pretty bad. Um, there's a new service out there called Web Fonts and that's basically a, um, a different way of creating fonts. It, it works across any browser, so your mobile, um, your PC, your, your old Mac, your new Mac, um, Internet Explorer, Safari, whatever it is, they work across all devices. And there's a few really good websites that, um, that let you basically browse a range of thousands of fonts, the really good fonts. So the first one being typekit.com, so that's T-Y-P-E-K-I-T, typekit.com, and it, it's probably the world's largest uh, resource of fonts for the web. So if you click on there, you'll see you'll be able to browse through all your fonts. You can type in um, an example paragraph or a heading that you're using in your blog, and you can actually scroll down and see what that heading looks like in a bunch of you know thousands of different fonts. You can specify, you know, you can sort by what type of fonts you like, so that you know you're not spending uh, all day doing it, but within 10 minutes you can find some really, really nice fonts that you can see how your blog headings that you're already playing around with in your real life blog, you can see how they'll look with the new font. Um, it, it, when you're getting set up, uh, it might seem a little bit scary, but there's actually a, a WordPress plugin that lets you do it all pretty much without having to touch code, again, which is pretty much what, you know, what I'm speaking about, but you've, again, it's easy to use as a WordPress plugin, you've got thousands of fonts, there's actually a free version of it as well. So if you've just got one website that you want all these nice fonts on, um, you can use, uh, I think, up to you know, 10, 20,000 page views. Um, you can use these really nice fonts at absolutely no cost at all. Um, but the type kit will just put a little badge down the top, sort of left, uh, sorry, the bottom left uh, hand side of your blog. Um, but once you, once you start getting you know, uh, up in page views, you can remove that uh, badge and allow more page views for two dollars a month. So, two dollars a month, really nice font for your blog. Um, you know, thousands and thousands of different options. It, it it really can go a long way to making your blog look a million bucks. I mean, the difference between your basic Helvetica font 
and um, which might be on you know forty percent of blogs around the world compared to something really you know nice, nice and elegant that um, that fits a certain image that you're going for. Um, it can really make your blog look a, a lot better. There's also Google Web Fonts, uh, which I will advise you to Google it, <laughs> uh, but that's completely that's completely free, um, and you can also preview fonts. Um, through this, in the same way you can with Typekit, type in you know a heading that your uh, heading of one of your blog posts. It'll show you what it looks like in all these different fonts. It does have a pretty good library. It's nowhere near as large as Typekit's, but there are some good fonts in there. Um, I've personally found that Typekit is easier to uh, test in terms of what making sure to look the font works in all different browsers. There's, there's a browser tester in there. Um, but Google Web Fonts, at least, you know, it's a, it's an easy way of including some. There's a plugin which I will tweet about now uh, called the Font Management Plugin, Fontmaster, and uh, it it basically lets you um, easily add any of the Google fonts that you see uh, into your website. So I'm just gonna if you hop on Twitter and go to or t go to twitter.com/theblogdesigner. I'll just tweet this um, plugin link now. Like I said, if anyone's got any questions on uh, any any of the any of the, uh, the areas I'm talking about as we go, just tweet me or um, hashtag blog workshop there. Uh, I can see um, Kimberly Santos, one of our um, one of our bloggers that we've worked with in the past, Miss Pop Couture. She has just tweeted out own new fonts, a whole new world, tykit.com didn't know, even know this this existed. So there's um there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, fantastic fonts in there and look I probably we probably use them in 95% of the websites that we design. So um, yeah, no, they're they're very very good. Uh, there are some alternatives as well, Font Deck and Font Squirrel, uh, but they don't. To be honest, if you're going to pay money for fonts uh, or even try to get any custom fonts in, they probably don't have the quite quite the same variety as Typekit, which I'd say is a standout. And uh, if you don't want to pay money, then Google Web Fonts is probably probably your way to go. I'll just take a minute here. If anyone has any questions, um, like I said, just uh, just tweet us, mention blog workshop in a hashtag, and uh, I'll, I'll be sure to answer these as they pop up. Uh, the next thing I'll be talking about in a minute or two will be creating your own color scheme. So I've got some really good tools that will help you create your own your own color scheme. Um, I'll also speak about inspiration. You know where where we get inspired. Um, and where I get inspired as a blog designer, um, in terms of putting together a really nice color scheme, because you, you you might know that you know a lot of your favorite websites have something unique about them in terms of the color, um, things that you might not have uh, might not be mainstream, really set the tone for what you love about their blog and their design. So setting a, a color scheme is really important. But in the meantime, um, as we take a one or two minute break here, uh, mention the blog designer. On Twitter or um, hashtag blog worship workshop, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you've got. All right, no questions as yet. So I hope that that means uh, I can see a few people are tweeting about the the blog workshop here. But I can uh, I'm gonna hope that that means that everyone's um, everyone's pretty happy or just taking the minute to 
to look on typecode.com and see if they can find um, their their new font set for their blog. Uh, but basically, um, yeah, basically use the plugin. Like I said, uh, just search Typekit in your WordPress WordPress plugins area. It'll just ask you if your username and password, and you should be able to hook a hook a, um, uh, a font set up really nicely. Uh, what I what I usually use is a combination of fonts. So I'll use like a big bold font, and it might look really good in italics, and I might use that for uh, for post headers, and then I might use a um, sort of a, a much more lighter font, a smaller font that suited well to paragraphs. I might use that for the actual blog posts and maybe the sidebar content and that kind of thing. We'll get on to color schemes now. So color scheme is one of the most important things to think about when creating your blog design. Um, you can turn away visitors within a second, or you can really set the tone for your content. And different colors convey different emotions. So red might symbolize um, excitement, passion, or love. Yellow, it's more sort of joy, happiness, optimism. Um, blue, you know, um, you see a lot of the banks and that kind of thing. They'll use blue because it's you know trust, calmness, strength, that kind of thing. Um, Black symbolizes style, elegance, which is why you see most fashion blogs are black and white. Uh, if you've got a blog which you think is going to apply to a global audience, um, and that's not sort of just the Western world, um, it's probably worth doing a bit of research on the meaning of each of the colors um, in different cultures, as colors can really have a uh, can have a different meaning between, say. Um, our world in Australia and other cultures. Um, there might be religious um, meanings for some colours or just the cultural thing over time. Um, many colour schemes you see in the real world is you know, a pretty strong, vibrant colour. In a blogging environment though, this can really take away from the content. So I always try to use a softer colour with only like little subtle splashes of a stronger colour to complement it. Um, so you don't want to go too overboard with your colour. I, inspiration is a big one. I think there's there's inspiration everywhere in our world for a color scheme, whether it be you know just walking around the city, seeing a, a new store. Um, one one thing that I'm big on is architecture and interior design because I think interior designers are incredibly creative, um, and they cover they cover living, making things, you know, making color work. Um, I, I you know I just Go on Pinterest, or uh, I'll just look at look through architecture and interiors on galleries on Pinterest, um, pin boards on Pinterest. I'll go to the news agents, or just flick through magazines for 20 minutes. I'll see. Um, I'll, I'll I might just sneak out the iPhone and just take a photo of something that think hey that those colours are really working well there. Um, it's actually funnily enough, it's not actually that often that I that I see grey colour in other blogs and websites. There's definitely um, definitely some out there that do, but for the most part. Most blogs are pretty plain in their use of colour, um, and that's fine. We've all got our personal taste, but again, colour can really set the tone for your blog. Um, and we'll talk about a bit about personality uh, and having your blog design sort of produce a personality. But colour, you know, colour is really a big part of that as well. It can really complement the personality that you're going for, whether it be that sort of fun, vibrant thing or. Uh, or an exciting blog, or a humorous blog, or a professional blog. You know, color definitely complements that. There's a really good tool for producing a color scheme. It's this free online tool. It's called ColorSchemeDesigner.com, and I'm just going to tweet about it. But it basically allows you to choose a color, and then have the tool generate um, complementary colors. So I'm just going to tweet about that now. Again, at the blog designer. Uh, create your own color scheme. Don't mind me. But the color scheme design is really good. You can uh, use the color wheel there to select a font. Oh, sorry, not a font. A color that you absolutely love, um, and you can sort of play around. And it'll give you it'll give you different variations of complementary colors. So it might be uh, lighter versions of that color, you know, more pastel sort of colors that are, aren't so vibrant and full on. It can give you completely um, uh, completely the opposite colors, but colors that'll work well. And you see those colors sort of positioned 
um, next to each other. So again, that's colorschemedesigner.com or just Google color scheme designer. Um, but it's a really good tool to create uh, color schemes that really work. Um, and you can choose whether you want one or two colors, three or four colors, etc. in the tool. Again, it's a free tool, so I'd suggest uh, getting on that. Another thing that I'd probably suggest doing is just Googling color psychology. And that'll really, uh, there's, some, there's some really good articles and blog posts out there on color psychology. And just, you know, really explaining what those colors mean in terms of our emotions. You know, how does our brain process them and uh, what feelings do that, you know, each of them convey. I can't imagine there'll be too many uh, questions on color scheme, but if you did want a second opinion on a color scheme of your blog or, or anything like that, um, again, feel free to tweet me at the end of this um, hangout, Melbourne Bloggers, and I'd be happy to give you my opinion or, um, or an idea of a color scheme that I think might work for the blog that I can see you're trying to build up. I'll move on now to creating your blog's personality because Look, I believe that your blog's personality is really an extension of yourself. Um, it's a tricky topic, but it's really the lens through which your reader perceives you. Uh, I guess it directly shapes the impact your blog makes upon readers. So um, all of these things your your blog design um, achieves. You might have seen, I don't know how many of you went to the Pro Blogger Conference um, a few weeks ago, but they really stress the importance of blog design. Um, I probably stress more not just the importance of blog design um, because I think a great blog, a great looking blog that doesn't match your personality isn't of that much value. I think a, a great looking blog that matches your personality is going to do wonders in terms of um, creating, you know, you know a building, a, keeping your blog sort of iconic and uh, memorable to people that know you. And building, I guess, that online consistency between what you're saying in social media and everything needs to look and feel like you. Um, and if your blog design isn't able to do that, I, I think people buy into your blog a lot less. There's a process that I sort of recommend when developing your blog's personality. Uh, and it's really just a series of questions to ask yourself. So I always, um, I'd, I get our clients to ask, ourselves, ask themselves, what tone are your readers asking for? So they're they're unlikely to resonate with a you know a heavy weight or a serious blog when your topic is you know some sort of creative topic. Um, just as if uh, we've got a lawyer <laughs> blogging about you know uh, a professional topic, um, something you know real bubbly personality, really vibrant in color, heaps of images and um, patterns and that kind of thing. It's it's not it doesn't the tone doesn't match the content. Also, ask yourself how you want to appear online. So, are you? Uh, what's your image? Are you going to be professional, out there, controversial? You know that kind of thing. Um, really try to nail the persona that you want to put out as a blogger. Uh, what writing style will you employ? Will you write with humour or with authority? So, uh, all of these things can really be shown through your blog design, through the colors you use, through the font set, like Typekit, go back to them. Some of them you'll see are a bit more playful. Some are pretty, you know, traditional. You can imagine a, you know, a bank or, a <laughs> or something like that uh, using it. Uh, I'd also look at how important photos are to your blog. Because you see some blogs will use uh, stunning photography. They'll use uh, photos really frequently throughout their blog. They might even have a photo grid rather than a traditional uh, straight down the, the page uh, roll, blog roll. Um, but photos can really help to, I guess, create a deeper reader connection. Um, whereas some topics, you know, it's left all to the text. So you really have to work out what role photos are going to play in your blog. If you've got access to really great photos, then um, then perhaps uh, a, sl a slider with all these photos scrolling through at the top of your page can be really good for your layout and for setting a personality. Um, otherwise. Um, if, if you're going to be more text heavy, then you probably want to focus on um, having more graphics in the sidebar. Uh, so that I guess there is this clear separation between your sidebar and your sort of post, uh, post area there. And lastly, I'd ask yourself, um, what is your angle or point of view? I think once you know what your readers are asking for, 
how you want to appear online, what writing style you will employ, um, whether photos are important to your blog, and what your point of view is or that your unique sort of position amongst the blogging world. Um, you find it a, how you'll be amazed at how um, easy it is to have a clear picture of these areas and make you know make the right decision design decisions. If, you know you've got a much um, much narrower focus on what what you know your blog should be and should become. Um, I think a lot of minimalist minimalist blogs like fashion blogs. Um, I think they're a big culprit here, although they do quite well these days. So they're doing something right. Um, I think a lot of minimalist blogs struggle to communicate personality. Uh, you've got a more colourful blogs with patterns and little graphics help to communicate and exude personality. Uh, having a photo of yourself also sets the tone for your blog. Uh, and the photo is probably underrated, I reckon, by a lot of bloggers. So if if you're wearing a uh, a business, you know, if you're if you've put got a photo in your sidebar and you're wearing a business attire, staring straight down the camera, and uh, uh, or maybe if you're looking comfortable and friendly, I think the the way that you perceive the blog and the blogger is completely different. So I'd, I'd put a lot of uh, thought into how you want to appear in that photo because uh, you know we get, we get so many first time readers to your site, you've, you've only got you know, that 15 seconds to capture them whether it be by your content by it, or by your design, or by your personality. Um, so you want to choose colours that match the emotions of your writing and you want to work out the level of personalism that you want. So again, work out uh, what tone your readers are asking for, how you want to appear online, what writing style you'll employ, uh, how important photos are to your blog, and also your angle or point of view. I'll, I'll, I'll take a break for a minute or two here. So again, look, if you've got any questions or um, anything to note about uh, creating your own blog's personality or something, maybe even something you've been confused with, you know, trying to balance between professionalism and personality, if you are in a sort of professional industry um, within your blogging, I know, I know there's a lot of blog bloggers that have uh, struggled with that before. So. Again, send us a tweet at the blog designer and hashtag blog workshop. Um, that'll be shorter answer questions uh, in a minute. Um, following the break, we'll be talking about improving sidebar design as well. Do, uh, I'll probably get a little bit controversial here because I think most sidebars are relatively, um, relatively similar to each other, and I think there's a lot of things that sidebars as a whole, bloggers as a whole, as a whole, are doing wrong with their sidebars. So. Uh, send us your questions and uh, we'll come back and we'll answer them and talk about improving sidebar design. All right, I had a good question here from Pen Warrior S, a new blogger. Um, so Pen Warrior S, Pen Warrior E double S dot blogspot .com .au. Uh, She asks, "What do you think of my colours and how I can improve my design?" And her blog is is about her, I guess, um, experience as um, as a as a traveller, as someone 
experiencing life. Um, she's 34 years old, quit her you know, good paying job in Croatia, packed her memories of wardrobe and moved to the other part of the world for love, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but she's got a blog about it and it looks like uh, from the photos here she's got a few really good sort of photos out and about in Melbourne. Uh, the first thing I noticed is that the the background is, you know, they've got, kind of got that blue background which I think really, really works well for a, a blog like this because it is about, um, I guess, probably working your way through life, um, exploring and I think that, that kind of blurred blue sky um, sort of visual effect gives, uh, you know, uh, complements that um, exploration and that optimism quite well. So I think you've done pretty well with the background. Um, we've got a left-hand sidebar here. But you'll notice most blogs have a sidebar on the right-hand side. And the reason being is that it helps you to, uh, to really absorb the post content a, a little bit more easily. Obviously, we read from left to right. Um, so having the content on the left makes it easy to immediately absorb that concept, uh, content and it can be a little bit con confusing your eyes sort of always get drawn to the, the left hand side so if you've got a sidebar there it really can make it just a little bit harder to read. Um, blogs with you know the content on the right rather than the left. Uh, I'd say that uh, the font that you've got for the logo there, Reinventing Myself in Melbourne, is quite plain but I think it on that background it works quite well. I don't think a big fancy logo is necessary there and look a big fancy logo isn't always necessary. You see a lot of uh, good blogs these days that just have uh, that just have a pretty basic title, they don't have any graphic or anything like that. One thing I would suggest is maybe looking at your uh, blog post uh, fonts. So I think your post titles are really letting you down there, I don't think they're doing your blogs your blog justice. I would also like to see, uh, and for a blog like this which has quite long posts uh, separated in, in numerous different sections, I would like to see uh, maybe a an introduction to each post at the start, something with a bit of emphasis, whether it be italicized fonts, whether it be bold, um, just something that I guess gives us give me a, gives me as the reader a bit of a overview of what I what I'm going to expect from that blog post, you know, how does it fit within your journey? Um, because it can, can be pretty intimidating these days just seeing, you know, three, three or four scrolls of the screen down full of, uh, full of text there. So I think uh, you've done a lot of good things with the blog and I think it probably fits within a certain visual style that you're going for. Um, but uh, a bigger and a nicer, more professional post title as well as maybe a, a um, an introductory area at the start of each post would, would work great. I'd probably also put the About Me above the blog archive, especially as a, you're a new blogger. I think blog archives and separating posts by month and by year um, is really only useful once uh, you've got a fair name for yourself, if readers have been reading your blog for a fair while and you've got months and months or years worth of posts because before, you know, until this point uh, you don't have much to sort through. So um, maybe focus on the about me section uh, first, but no, overall, I, I think I'm pretty impressed there. Uh, I've got another tweet here um, from kittybroke.com. If you're still figuring out the exact direction of your blog but have narrowed down, how perfect should design be? And I Look, this is an interesting one. I don't think you have to 100% nail your blog design right from the start. I think you want to get the basics right, um, and that might be a uh, layout, font, um, or a logo, and then build and uh, just play around with it after that. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of clients that um, we have set them up with a really nice blog design. They've got started and they've just wanted to tweak it every few months as they go as they get seek inspiration from somewhere else um, or they've just had a new idea that they want to implement. I think, look, blogs are they're a creative outlet. They're not only a creative outlet for our writing but for our sense of design and sense of style as well. So I don't think it has to be something that has to be done and then locked away for another year and then you can then make a complete redesign. I think you can tinker with it as long as it seems familiar. So have a few really familiar elements that you keep to your blog. Um, 
whenever you do a, a redesign or a, a little update, but um, it doesn't have to be perfect right from the start. As long as you figure out, you know, I guess the tone, um, the tone and just keep a few consistent elements, like I said, like fonts. We'll get on now to improving your sidebar design. So you, you'll notice um, that most blogs have a pretty standard set of tools. So that might be, um, it might be categories, monthly archives, or maybe even a few social media links. Uh, and these are often the ones that WordPress or Blogger gave you when you started your blog. And I know a lot of us, we haven't, might not have even updated the sidebar since we, we got it other than uh, putting in maybe a little bit of a blurb at the top. Think about how you use other blogs that you read. <clears throat> Do you ever use these elements? Because if not, maybe evaluate whether they're essential in your blog. I know a lot for, you know, there was five years there where everyone had a tag cloud, but not that many people actually, you know, clicked and interacted with the tag cloud. So what point did it serve? It just sort of looked cluttered. And so you sort of don't have to, I'd say you don't have to conform to how you think a sidebar should be structured. I think a lot of the best blogs will structure the sidebar, sidebar just how they want it, you know, how they, they've given it a bit of thought. They don't need some things, they want some other things. Um, a lot of us these days are, uh, probably overcomplicating our sidebar as well, having you know latest pins, um, you know it might be latest pins, your latest Instagram posts, blogs you like, little banners of other affiliate programs or other blogs that you like, um, as well as your categories, subscription, about, you know your blog's all about your content. So wherever you can find ways to simplify it, I think the better. I think a shorter, my personal belief is a short, sharp and sweet sidebar works very well because most uh, sidebars are ignored because they're distracting and probably overly cluttered. Um, I think it's important to remember that right next to your sidebar you've got a column full of your blog posts and all you know it's full of words. So why have a sidebar full of words as well? If you're going to have one, again, keep it short and sweet and wherever you can, I think your sidebar is a really good place where you can have, um, have a few nice simple graphics. So whether it be some social icons, and there are some good widgets out there for social buttons in your sidebar. So if you just if you go into if you log into WordPress, go into plugins, go to add new, and then search social social sidebar. So uh, you should be able to find a good one there, which can link up to your Pinterest, your Twitter, your Facebook, whatever you're trying to promote. Um, one interesting approach, and something that we're pushing our clients to do more and more these days is to represent uh, each category or each main category with a graphic. Um, so there is a blog that we've recently done this, which I'm just going to tweet the link to now. But basically, we've split their posts into a few different um, categories. So they've got, um, it's called earlyalexandra.com, A-I-R-L-I-E, alexandra.com. And so we've created graphics for four different categories, outfits, beauty, interior, and edits, and then lastly, general. So each category, we've got an image that I guess is a visual representation of the kind of posts that are in that category, and then we've got text over the top that uh, I guess specifies the name of the category. And I think that immediate visual um, communication of, of the category is a lot more effective these days with our shorter attention spans and... Uh, Improving, you know, increasingly visual nature of the web. I think it's important to, um, yeah, to really simplify and uh, make that sidebar more visual rather than text-based. So, in, you know, that's what we're doing these days. In favour of, uh, you know, we used to have the list going down the sidebar with with our categories. Now we just simplify it to a few main categories and have a graphic. But I'll just tweak the link here. I've seen there's one or two questions there, so I'll get to those in a minute. Uh, another popular feature of blog sidebars are uh, the subscribe via email widgets, which I think are great. But look, you'll get a lot more. You will get a lot more subscribes. Um, 
having a bar across the top of your blog rather than in the, rather than the box in your sidebar. Of course, having the bar at the top can be a little bit more obtrusive, but you will get more subscriptions. So for those that really want to focus on building a list and building it early, and you know, um, and feel like they've got a good consistency of content and the quality of content that they don't mind letting their readers know whenever they've got new content. Um, so going hard early, trying to get subscribers is great. Probably the simplest plugin for gathering uh, email subscribers to your blog within WordPress is uh, a plugin actually made by WordPress, and it's called Jetpack. So if you search Jetpack within your uh, WordPress plugin screen, you'll be able to add that. Um, it's super simple to set up. It basically, yeah, you'll basically drag the widget in your sidebar area. Um, and it'll do everything for you. So at the end of each day um, that you've posted, it'll automatically send out that post to the people that are subscribed through the sidebar. And you can also, it's got a bunch of heap, it's got heaps of different features as well. But Jetpack by WordPress is probably the most um, popular plugin going around these days, I'd say. Um, and yeah, incredibly powerful. Free download again. So I guess overall my biggest tip with sidebars and improving sidebar design is to make them more visual these days than what they were even a year or two ago. It's the visual sidebars that look best on the eye. So think back to some of the blog designs that you like the most and just look at their sidebars. How Are they represented with a lot of different graphics and uh, buttons rather than text lists and big descriptions? Um, the more visual your sidebar is, the better. So leave the words to your content. Um, and I think it provides that good balance for your eyes as well between content left, side by right, um, text, images. Um, it makes it does make it quite uh, easy to read. Just uh, having a look through some of the questions now. All right, Sue Henley on Twitter, so Susan Doff Henley uh, is a travel writer and she is working in a travel blog and asks, what do you think of the new Pinterest style blog themes like uh, Safrica? Um, I'm not, uh, Saf Safrica, sorry. I'm not actually familiar with that blog, but I know that there are an increasing number of blogs with that sort of, that uh, visual um, grid sort of theme where it might just be a little image representing each post. Um, and I, look, I like it, but I don't like it for every industry. I think that there's some, there's some, uh, there's some type of blogs that, um, that the long form post works really well in, especially when you're trying to tell a story. Um, if, you're, if, you're, if your blog's less storytelling and more just information that's able to be represented visually, then a Pinterest style sort of grid with just photos can work really well. It gives a really quick overview of the latest content on your blog. Um, there's, also, there's one, there's one uh, fashion blog in particular that we've done this for recently and so we did a custom uh, homepage there with a sort of photo grid that I guess represented all of, the, all of our latest posts. Uh, so that's tanara.com.au. I'll just uh, tweet a link to that now, so I guess you can get that up and sort of see what I mean in terms of uh, photo grids and um, having a, a a blog page that is, I guess, lighter on content and more based around uh, the images. Sorry, I can't talk and type. I'm not that smart. There we go, just tweeted that. And now you can see what we did there is uh, created that sort of visual grid um, and also created a separate blog page which has, I guess, that more traditional long form post because um, one thing with those Pinterest style blog themes is that they're, not everyone loves them. So you might, you might have a personal preference towards that side of blog but you might be alienating a, a percentage of bloggers there. I don't have a good indication of what percentage of people love them and don't, but there are definitely some people that prefer the written word, prefer uh, prefer that traditional 
blog um, blog sort of layout uh, in favor of the uh, the Pinterest style themes. Um, but like I said, I mean, if you want to if you want to look really modern and uh, and quite sort of cutting edge, some of those themes can look really good. But I've to be honest, I haven't found many bloggers that choose one of those Pinterest style themes and actually uh, and actually stick with it for longer than six months. I think they get frustrated with the amount of content that they're able to get out there re relatively um, quickly from um, arriving at the homepage. At the end of the day, uh, if yeah, like I said, if you if your blog is telling a good story, if your posts are telling good stories, then let the words and uh, maybe even just a feature image do the job of of um, of setting that sort of layout. Also got another question here. Do you have any suggestions for linking a website to a blog? Uh, look, it's a tricky one. Um, it, look, it's hard to tell. It depends on whether it's a business, whether it's uh, sort of just a more information-based website. Uh, I think text links can get lost very easily these days. Uh, and banners and uh, little blog icons or, um, or blog badges uh, are still quite effective. They've been around for a number of years though. I think I know of a, a lot of really smart bloggers that will make their, um, their uh, a little blog badge in the sidebar and have it easily downloadable um, if, if that's what you're asking. I know um, I see Miles here, uh, one of the Melbourne bloggers uh, in, uh, organizers is tweeting you now for a Bit of a response, but um, yeah, I, I think blog badges still have relevance and make it easy for other people to link your blog, link to your blog uh, from it from a website. So uh, if you do have a designer, speak to your designer about getting a blog badge up because they are relatively easy to put together. They might only take five or ten minutes, but you have to know a little bit of code for it. So it's not something that I can uh, that you can sort of do by yourself. Uh, I'll speak now about post sliders. Um, so a post slider is uh, that I guess that rotating area at the top of a blog we might have a big image I guess that represents that blog post and it might um, it might then have just a, a little a few word teaser of the blog post as well as the blog title next to it. So uh, these can look really professional and help to highlight particular posts. So if you've got a post that you know historically have done really well, that they're always relevant to people, so it's not just a, you know, um, it's not just relevant for, for any given week, it's something that people could read over a lot of uh, a long period of time. Um, yeah, having a post slider can be a really effective way of, you know, showing and highlighting that, uh, a particular set of posts. Many of them of the post sliders though can sort of look pretty rough and unpolished. So if you don't have a designer and developer on hand, if you're going to have a post slider, I'd suggest spending a, a little bit of money on it um, because there are a few really good plugins out there that give you a really good and effective post slider without having to know any code or make really any adjustments. They've got a few set, you know set layouts and uh, you can see how it's going to look. Um, there's Nevo slider. So if you search, if you Google Nevo slider for WordPress, so it's N-I-V-O, that's a $29 plugin. So that's the that's a really good one for relatively small fee. Uh, you've got Slide Deck, so that's slidedeck.com, and that's $49, but it's got some absolutely fantastic designs. You've got a lot of different options, as you know. Do you have a little? Um, do you have a semi-transparent bar with all your you know your post titles on it? Yes. If so. Is it on the right? Is it on the left? Is it down the bottom? Uh, are images full width across the page? Um, there's another one called Woo Slider, W-O-O -O Slider. That's $49, but it works really well on mobile sites as well. Um, and you can have a slider with just you know rotating through photos as well as some of your most recent blog posts. So post again, post sliders can look very good and professional, but many of the cheap free ones are um, cheap and free ones are can look pretty rough if you don't have a designer or a developer on hand to actually fit it into your blog design. Whereas ones like Nevo Slider for WordPress, Slide Deck, and Woo Slider can look really good out of the box. Again, if anyone has any questions on uh, post sliders, just let me know.
Uh, we're getting to the the end of my uh, of our of our experimentation with having a Google Plus Hangout for the Melbourne vloggers. Um, but one tool that I came across the other day that I think is absolutely fantastic for um, for bloggers is called Canva.com, C-A-N-V-A, and it's essentially a free uh, photo editing uh, website or online app. So you might you don't you know. Photoshop's pretty um, pricey and it's all pre also pretty intimidating in how to use. So Canva has a number of set layouts and uh, different fonts, different visual effects that you can apply on top of your images. So you can create really nice graphics for your post or sidebar without having to be uh, an experienced designer. So that's Canva.com. I believe it's free, but um, there's probably I think there are paid elements to it where you can get a designer to collaborate on something you're working on. But you can certainly just drag and drop um, really some really nice um, symbols, uh, logo elements, nice fonts on top of your uh, of an image that you want to put in a post. So you can go from just sort of having standard images to uh, an image that comes off across as quite professional. Um, so if, if you've got a blog theme that works with a featured post, or if you just want to add some photos into the sidebar, uh, this can be. You know, the Canva.com can help you create images that are a lot better than what you might have been previously able to do. The last thing I'll mention, and this is probably uh, the thing that's going to help you um, improve your blog design without needing to code more than anything else, is really investing in a good blog framework. So a blog, a blog framework is really a blog theme, a WordPress blog theme that um, rather than just having a few basic things, you know, where you put in your logo and uh, logo and maybe a few uh, specific features in that theme, a blog framework is like a full featured theme. It's got a million different things you can do with it and a million different settings you can um, use, except it's pretty much, it looks like crap, like it, it's pretty blank um, and it's up to you to choose what color font you want, what um, what fonts you want from the list that they give you. You can upload uh, or you can choose uh, background colors. You can, yeah, like I said, you can choose fonts, you can choose layouts, whether you have a skinny sidebar or a thick sidebar, whether you have um, a border underneath headings in the sidebar or um, whether you have a, you know, a contact page. It's essentially a really powerful blog theme without much of a design to it. So it, it's sort of like uh, a blank canvas to setting up your blog design. So all the blogs that we do, we design them based on a, uh, on a theme framework called Canvas by WooThemes. So that's WooThemes, W-O-O themes.com. And uh, it's called Canvas. And basically, it will have hundreds of different settings that you can adjust. So you can, on the fly, adjust your background, your fonts, uh, your layouts, all these kind of things. So investing in a, in a framework, and it might only be $50, $80 at the start of your blog um, journey, can really make it easier for you to make adjustments to your blog design in the future. So, I mean, you can always do things like fonts and uh, color schemes that I've mentioned before, but uh, a theme framework takes it all a few steps further, and uh, it's perfect for those that like to tinker with their blog designs, as I know many bloggers do. There's also another one. There's a few different good ones um, out there. There's Genesis, and uh, I think the other one's uh, Thesis as well. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd definitely suggest looking at a theme framework. So, like I said, there's uh, WooThemes Canvas. There's also uh, the Thesis and Genesis, as the I'd say they're the most popular um, theme frameworks. And it'll make a lot of the things that I've talked about um, tonight easy to do. So I'd really suggest that. Um, if you have any other questions, I'll be hanging around on Twitter in the, in the next half an hour. Um, so again, tweet at the blog designer. I'm also running a, uh, a much more in-depth workshop on this where we get to work with your blog sort of more hands-on, uh, and that's at the Honey Bar on October 20th. Um, so the Honey Bar being in South Melbourne, really nice place. We've got the function room up there. And so we're going to get a group of, um, I think we're looking at probably about 20 or so different bloggers from around Melbourne, from around different um, parts of the blogging community to, uh, to, yeah, to see what I've got to say on adjusting your design. Bring your laptop along, I'll work on your design with you, but we go into a lot more depth, we go into a lot more sort of hands-on practical stuff. So there's a bit of hand-holding there and a bit more explanation 
And there's also a lot more in terms of how you can use your blog design to promote. So uh, whether that be uh, interacting with your Facebook page automatically, hooking, you know, hooking your um, your blog up to your Facebook um, theme frameworks. Uh, again, going into more detail on that. Um, so it's a lot more sort of practical, and you don't have to listen to me so much as play around with your blog while you've got a, other bloggers there that are um, that you can communicate with and can share their thoughts. So I know we've got Miles. Miles will be there, and some other really good bloggers um, sharing their thoughts on promoting their blog and uh, how blog design can help to do that. You know, subscribe boxes, all these kind of things. Uh, Miles mentioned uh, there's one called Hello Bar. If you Google Hello Bar, uh, that can be a pretty handy subscription feature as well. That's uh, so we're we're going to be speaking on a lot of these type of things. So you can find out more information on that if uh, if if you've still got uh, a few questions about. Uh, Editing your own blog design. Again, our workshops along with the lines of blogging um, and updating your blog without having to learn to code, because uh, code can be pretty scary. So head over to theblogdesigners.com. So that's theblogdesigners.com. And again, that's on October 20th. So there's um, we've extended the early bird special until the end of tonight for all of our Melbourne bloggers, but um, that should that should be a really good day with some really smart bloggers and maybe a drink or two at the end as well at, uh, at the Honey Bar. So um, yeah, like like I said, I'll be around on Twitter if you have any questions. If there's anything you want a second opinion on, far away. But uh, thanks for having me, Melbourne bloggers, and uh, hopefully it's all gone without a hitch and uh, you've enjoyed yourselves. Thanks a lot.